shout out to you on a Monday morning here in the Midwest. It's your boy, Big Vern, coming to you live from the App of Stupid Studios. Act like you got some sense. Smash the like and subscribe button. We like it when you do that here on a hot and hazy Monday. The high today is going to be 97, so make sure you got your dogs and your pets inside the house. Don't want anything bad to happen to them. Got an action-packed day ahead of us here in the studio. I want to talk about the NFL Hall of Fame over the weekend. The Athletic, they had a report that from Dan Pompey about the Hall of Fame coaches going into the class, and they were trying to lower the years down from five to one. And they talked about two coaches in particular, Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll. And I started to dig on Coach Belichick, and I will talk about his sketchy legacy in the NFL. The Monsters of the Midway, are they back? Chicago is playing no games. They had a surprise acquisition on Friday that seemed to shake the ground, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll pivot to the world of college basketball, where the UConn Huskies are getting ready to bail on the Big East, and they will end up in the Big 12. How that is sending shockwaves through the world of college basketball. And then Lincoln Riley out in USC, he says the quiet part out loud, and he alluded to something that I think is going to become the trend in the next year to two years those stories and many more when we come back from a quick 20 from an unofficial sponsor of the show this is big burn drop a spot Burger King, BK, have it your way because you rule. Order online, download the app, or visit the good folks at your local Burger King. BK, have it your way because you rule. So I'm not going to go ahead and bury the lead. Just going to jump right into it. I'm going to talk about Bill Belichick and a sketchy legacy. Now, the NFL Hall of Fame requirements, like I said prior to the break, five years, you have to be retired, and then they negotiated it down they're trying to get it to one year and i was like why why now out of nowhere this is going to be the guy that i focused on was bill belichick and this is important pay attention roger goodell was bought in to kill the spygate investigation that was his sole purpose that was his big hiring moment Roger Goodell was bought in to kill the Spygate investigation and Bill Belichick was accused of videotaping signals of opponents they played. Now, Bill was the coach of Cleveland. And this is why I really don't buy he's this Super Bowl savant and everything because there is a checkered past with Bill Belichick. When he was the coach of Cleveland, he only had one winning season. He was the coach of Cleveland. They only had one winning season. And that was in the 90s. And he shows up his first year, his first year in New England, they they go 5 and 11. So in the 90s he only won one year and then his first year with the Patriots they were 5 and 11 and then the next year they win the Super Bowl does that seem a little fishy and that's a fair question because if you go back and you look at all of the head coaches that have come and gone in between that era that has never happened to any coach in NFL history only one does that sound fishy he's a coach that hasn't won anything in a decade and one winning season in cleveland to go five and eleven his first year in new england and then to a super bowl championship 
on a nine and seven team that year. That's a wild card. Again, these things are just a bit fishy. And that's a legitimate question. Why did Roger Goodell destroy the tapes before anyone else could look at them? Again, this was his audition for the job to come in and make it seem like there's nothing to see here as he is the judge, jury, and executioner. You forget, he works for the owners. He does not have any power. All of his power stems from him over the players. The owners run the NFL. The owners run him. They pay his salary to do their bidding. And this guy destroyed evidence where the fans could judge for themselves was he guilty of this? And to a large question, is that the Patriot way? Because it seems like scandal after scandal after scandal, and then you start to examine these records and you're just like, well, wait a minute. This only works in one place of the country. It didn't work for Charlie Weiss when he jumped ship and he went to college to coach Notre Dame. He did not have the same success. Romeo Cornell did not have the same success. Bill O'Brien single-handedly destroyed the Houston Texans. Josh McDaniels didn't have the same success. Matt Patricia didn't have the same success. Brian Flores didn't have the same success. Eric Mangini did not have the same success. All of these guys were highly unsuccessful everywhere they went. It was only under a culture of having plausible deniability about sign stealing. And when Eric Mangini, when he gave the game away on ESPN, he became a pariah. There's files all over the place. And I will say allegedly, just to go ahead and give myself a little bit of leeway and not be here getting sued for slander, but you have to ask those questions. He's got a sketchy past. And it doesn't help that he's got this, conf I wouldn't even call it confidence, I would call it arrogance. Some people feel like arrogance is earned if you, you know, you done this so many times how could they question your level of arrogance and that's fair but with him there's so much it's so much implications of something else and we'll get more into that when we come back from a quick rap album we're promoting this month this is big burn drop the spot -na 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 it's your boy big burn promoting another rap album this month free butter by il mac and Geechee Gotti in stores now get it where you legally consume music whether it be apple music google play or spotify my personal favorites is schizo seven days straight won't let it for the moment and no honor in stores now yeah shout out to il mac and Geechee Gotti free butter really good album really good album i slept it came out in may but we're promoting it right now so yeah make sure you go out and get your copies so when we talked last we went over the sketchy legacy of bill belichick and i think what complicates his hall of fame two things number one he hasn't officially retired so he has to turn in those retirement papers. And if you put this man in the Hall of Fame within a year from five years, that gives people time to find players that had discontent with Bill Belichick. That gives you people to go in the spy gate and start digging up things. There's hundreds of millions of dollars on the line. So the NFL needs you to believe in the fairy tales that they feed people. Because if you believe in the New England lie, then all is well that ends well. But if you start questioning 
what the hell was all of this about? Now you become an enemy of the league. In 2007, Bill Belichick was accused of filming the Jets' defensive signals from an on-field location that wasn't disclosed. Now, they couldn't do this to the Giants, so they lost in the Super Bowl to Eli Manning, 17-14. to The NFL, again, the NFL needs you all to believe that this man is who he says he is. They've invested in this Patriots myth past 05, giving you three additional Super Bowls. Two, he should have been lost. However, if you don't fall for the bullshit and the clown show, and then you start asking questions, now you're a problem. And all of this is above ground. All of this is, a, is above ground. It's just a legitimate question. Now, also, they want to go ahead and put Pete Carroll into the NFL Hall of Fame, which I started scratching my head because I'm just like, why? Pete Carroll, what has he done to get into the Hall of Fame? And why would you put those two together? Because they both coached New England. Actually, Bill Belichick replaced Pete Carroll in New England. Yeah, what did Pete Carroll ever do to get into the NFL Hall of Fame? And I don't think he's turned in his papers also because he's taking some teaching job at USC. I don't know. Quick question. What happened to the tuck rule? Yeah, what happened to the tuck rule? Because in that same wild card season that the Patriots had, Tom Brady fumbled in the snow. We all saw it was a fumble. But somehow a league office in New York determined what we saw on the field and invented something that's never been invented in NFL history called a tuck. And if it wasn't a rule invented just for New England, just to prop up the New England lie, only one team has benefited from that rule. One team has benefited from a tuck rule. That's not even a rule anymore. They made sure they got rid of it. Now, Brady got hurt in 08. The Patriots, they went 11-5. and five. They didn't win anything. And this is coming off a Super Bowl loss. The same caliber of team. Why couldn't they close the show? These are all legitimate questions. Bill Belichick. He's a guy with a checkered past. Deflate game. A lot of people don't even remember they were playing the Colts and it was he the, the guy called a, a interception and he said that the ball was flat. Now you tell me that a pro organization they don't have a PSI level pump that they can pretty much check the accuracy on the ball right then and there and tell you is this inflated or is it not? They let this be a debate amongst fans. And then they waited the following week where now we're checking PSI levels on footballs. And then they waited for Tom Brady to play a suspect team and he threw these touchdowns and it was like, it doesn't look like his PSI is bothering him now. <laughs> well, what is it? One or two years after that, we saw Tom Brady struggling to string together four coherent quarters of football in Tampa. That's a legitimate question. Teams complained when they came to play in Foxborough that 
from the OC in the booth to the quarterback out there on the field, they had signal jammers. None of this has trickled down to people implicating Bill Belichick and pointing the finger at him. But if you want to be honest and be an honest broker in what you're seeing, this guy has a sketchy legacy in the NFL. And if they're able to go ahead and get him into the Hall of Fame and get him over the hump, you're able to say whatever you want to say. But as long as he's out there and before he gets inducted and people start really digging in and asking questions, it's going to leave you with mixed emotions. I know some of this that I'm talking about is really jogging the memory of most fans to where you, you're scratching your head and you're just like, you got a point. I know I have a point. Because that's what we do here. In 2009, the NFL passed a rule prohibiting tackling quarterback passers at or below the knee. Now, why would you make that rule? That's because the year prior, Brady got hurt on the same play. And it wasn't like it was intentional, wasn't like it was malicious, wasn't a cheap shot at all. But they needed you to believe in the Patriot lie. They needed you to believe in the fake New England way. And then they had ESPN, which is culpable. And ESPN was complicit in crafting the narrative, next man up, and all of these empty platitudes, and they never once questioned any of this. And if I'm an honest Joe and I'm an honest broker and I'm asking for questions, I'm asking for answers to legitimate questions, this dude, Bill Belichick, he doesn't make it into the Hall of Fame. Way too much baggage, too much is up in the air, and there's nothing anyone's going to go ahead and say to change somebody's mind about the kind of person he is. He's very confrontational. He's not a likable fellow. And people have two kinds of Bill Belichick's. Everybody doesn't get the same Belichick. Wes Welker has a completely different outlook on Bill Belichick than Julian Edelman. If you found yourself at the end of this man's spear, then there was hell to pay. And this was never about making it easier for coaches to get into the Hall of Fame. This was about protecting the legacy of Bill Belichick and the highly controversial parts of his legacy. Because the more that you examine it, there's a lot here that needs to be answered. So, New England faithful NFL stands, let me know. Do I got it wrong? Is Bill Belichick the worst thing on two feet or does he deserve to go into the Hall of Fame for winning questionable Super Bowls? It's your boy, 